This meeting is being recorded. Great, awesome. Okay, well, welcome Tuesday, uh, the 17th of May. I'm not sure how it uh, got here already, but I uh, hope everyone is doing well. My name is Annie Lindy Kugel. I use she, her pronouns, and I run the Community Services Network. So we have a great group of people here to present and share awesome information with the community. So um, in uh, to respect their time, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So we'll do the three presentations and then we'll have time at the very end to share updates or have need requests or just chat. So I'll stay on till 11. Um, and uh, if anyone else wants to stay on, I can hang out with you. <laughs> so, uh, but to, to start today, we have Active Children Portland, Sienna Moreno will share. And then we have the YWCA, Ryan Brickley will share and Comcast Business Essentials. And it's either going to be Chang or I think David eventually. Yes, David is here. Great. Okay, awesome. So that's kind of the flow of today. Any questions before we get started? everyone here and no one's having any technical issues. Okay, great, awesome. All right, so we will go ahead and get started with Active Children Portland and Sienna. And I am so sorry because when I canceled the meeting earlier last week, it canceled her invite. So she's kind of coming at it short notice. But just a reminder to get you mute your end or I'll mute it for you. I can find you. So Sienna, go ahead. Thank you so much for being here. Hi. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us today. I am so excited to tell you more about Active Children Portland and hear some more about the community organizations in the area. Um, my name is Sienna. I use they, them pronouns, um, and I am the program manager for Active Children Portland. Um, I will give you all a heads up that I will be transitioning out of this role within the next month or so. So I'll drop our info um, kind of contact information as well in case you're interested in getting contacted with us um, outside of that kind of time frame. But before we go too much farther, I want to take a moment to share a really cool tool with you all. Um, I'll drop that in the chat now and just recognize that um, the Portland metro area rests on the Multnomah, Waskau, Kaulitz, Kathlimet, Adfalati, Kakamis, Benzoshinuk, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Malala, and many other tribes who made their homes along the Columbia River um, on their land. So I encourage you to check out the space that you occupy and maybe learn a little bit more about where you are in kind of this geography. So Active Children of Portland was started in 2011 and we were really designed to help mitigate and remove the barriers that exist to health and academic achievement um, for students in underserved communities, particularly students of color because of the way that the United States is set up. Um, so our goal is to help, help keep kids healthy and safe while succeeding in schools and while positively engaged in their schools and community. Um, so we do this through consistent programming and mentorship, and that mentorship piece is really, really important to us. Um, and our programs kind of consist of mentorship, academic enrichment, nutrition education and support, social emotional learning and development, and trauma-informed coaching. Um, so kind of creating safe spaces for youths to take risks um, while also being safe and kind of maintaining that safety and really fun times. So we do this through some amazing partnerships. Um, Active Children in Portland uses the nationally accredited US Soccer Foundation Soccer for Success curriculum um, that includes things like mentorship, um, nutrition, social emotional learning, and team building through the tool of non-competitive soccer. And so we recognize that a national program is amazing um, and touches on some really amazing kind of nutrition education, but we also recognize that it's gonna be different for a Portland population, especially when we're talking about things like food security. And so we also work with with the Oregon Health Science University um, School of Nutrition, who allow us to make nutrition programming really relevant to our Portland population, especially when we're talking about things like real resources we can provide to families um, and, in, and individuals in the Portland metro area. So that's really important to us when we're talking about things like food safety. Um, it's important for us because 94% of the students that we serve are students that are on free and reduced lunch. And so it's important that we are recognizing this and providing resources both in and outside of our programming. Um, I will also kind of call out that last fall we lost, launched a one of a kind after school program um, with the roller derby um, organization and Portland Rose City Rollers. Um, so this was a one of a kind program. We are super excited to provide this for our girls and non-binary youth. Um, we are on our second season and looking to expand. And so super excited to celebrate that. 
Um, I'll talk a little bit more about our model and what that looks like, but that is something that I really want to highlight. <laughs> um, so we partner with agencies that partner with these Sun community schools and we work with their Sun seasons to provide this programming. So our ideal model looks like two hour sessions, um, four days a week at a local kind of school within the Sun community in the Portland metro area. Um, one of our hours is dedicated to the tool of sport, so our largest programmers are within the tool of soccer. Um, this is all non competitive and we center things like nutrition in that programming as well. Um, and the other hour is dedicated to things like homework help and creativity workbooks that we write customly for our students. Um, so I'll highlight that all of our curriculum is designed not just around the physical health of the student, but also the social, emotional, intellectual development of each child. So we really like to take the kind of whole student approach when we're talking about supporting students um, throughout the school year. We also provide programming through winter um, as well as summer. So it is year round programming. Um, we do have four kind of program seasons. Each of one of them is about six to eight weeks. Um, so consistency is a really big part of what we do because we know that that's where you thrive right um nutrition education kind of links what we do both in the kind of outside or inside space um, and that's what i'm talking about when i'm referring to things like um, the workbooks and the outside space which is the kind of um, non-competitive sport education um, so it is that kind of link for us um, learning those kind of positive habits now really helps to diminish the many long term preventable illnesses later on in life. And so when we're talking about this, um, of course, this is for our youth, right? This is for kids to have a really fun time and build a team. Um, but it's also an investment in our future an investment in public health. And so there's really two sides to kind of what we do, especially when we're talking about working with youth, right? They are truly our future. Um, so I will say that again, all of our sport and movement programming is non competitive and so while we won't be gearing up for kind of a big end of the season tournament, we are using the tool of soccer or sports um, as a catalyst for social change so building communities and helping to break down barriers that exist for many of our students. Um, and I think it's important that we talk about this because in Oregon alone one in five students are on their own after school. Um, and only one free sport opportunity exists for every 2438 students and so that's in Oregon alone. Um, and so it's important that we have these opportunities for our youth, especially when we think about things like the power of regular physical activity. So just 12 minutes of physical activity has been shown to reduce the achievement gap in students in low and high income communities. Um, so when we do this, it's important that we do this for investment, but it's also important for our youth to have a good time and feel, you know, the ability to thrive, right? Um, and that just kind of requires support sometimes. So we'll also highlight some of our amazing partnerships. So of course our school, I'm sorry, our school's Unite Neighborhood Sun program partners um, with the Immigrants for Refugee Community Organization, Latino Network, El Programa, um, and Metropolitan Family Services, Impact Northwest, and Campfire Columbia. We also partner with the U.S. Soccer Foundation, Rose City Rollers, OHSU School of Nutrition, Center for Healing and Justice Through Sport, TriMet, and we recently had our um, girls be the two girls of the game for the Thorns match recently. The Thorns won, which is awesome. <laughs> Um, and I'll also highlight that a big part of what we do is really getting youth and the, their community of support the tools to have fun being active and feel connected to their community. So we have also re worked recently with Dick Sporting Goods, Adidas, the Black Women's Clayer Collective, Ridwell, and the Community Services Network to provide and distribute free activity-based resources to the Portland metro area. So that's a little bit of what we do. Um, thank you so much for having us today, and I'd love to connect with any of y'all that are interested in working with us. Awesome. Thanks, Yana, so much, so much. I know that we have definitely valued having you join um, our resource fairs and share information. And they also bring um, like uh, equipment, sporting equipment to hand out, which has been really valuable. So as many of us know, that's very expensive purchases for many. And so being able to have access to that is super important, especially as we move into summer months too, and kids are a little bit more um, potentially unsupervised during those summer months. So that's super critical. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, does anyone have any questions? I know that I do <laughs> always, but if anyone else has any questions or would like Sienna's information, Sienna, would you mind popping that in the chat for them? Thank you. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions for Sienna? So it looks like Troy said, uh, is participation exclusively through Sun Schools? Good question. 
That's a great question. So we have previously worked largely with Sun Schools. We are absolutely happy to expand and have worked with that previously. Uh, we just have to talk a little bit more about what that model looks like, and I would be happy to do that. We're definitely able to kind of tailor our programming to what the needs of the individual school or district looks like, um, because we know that that's going to be different by district and school. Awesome. And two, is it every Sun School, Siana, that you're in, every Sun School program? Yeah, so it's going to depend on the season. We'll have different kind of schools per season. Again, we have four program seasons, so it's kind of what the needs of the school is at that time um, that we work with. I will also highlight that we work with K through eight largely. Um, so that is kind of the kind of groups that we um, typically serve. Okay, awesome. And then it looks like Meg said, is there transportation for children from their school to your location if their school isn't actively, say, in a SUN program? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, currently, no. So our model typically works with after school programs. So the students will go straight from their school time to kind of like a snack time and then into the program. Um, so transportation hasn't been a huge barrier for us um, now. Um, we could talk about what that looks like if we're wanting to work with a school that doesn't have um, kind of participation sorry, it doesn't have like the space um, for the participation in the program at the time. Um, I will also mention that for our coach mentors, we have a partnership with TriMet, so we're able to provide help with transportation to the kind of on school space, if that makes sense. Does that answer your question, Meg? Okay, looks like it did. Is there a cost, May Laurie would like to know? Yeah, so the program is free to the students. Um, the only cost to the agency or the partners that we would work with is half of the wages for the coach mentors. Um, so we provide all of the equipment, so things like pop-up goals, balls that the students get to keep, um, cones, pennies, um, cleats, things like that. Um, but the kind of, and all of that is free of cost. The only cost that would kind of be expected is the half of the wage of the coach mentor that we work with and we train. Great. And then it looks like, um, are there any locations in St. John's or downtown areas? Yeah, so we work with George Middle School in St. John's. Um, we're able to expand into whatever kind of school that we're able to work with. Um, downtown, I don't know that we have any schools currently, but again, we're able to expand and work with um, kind of schools throughout there. And is that link by chance on your website, Sienna? as far as the schools that you're currently involved in or connected to? It is not. Um, I'm not sure that we're able to share that information um, mm -hmm. for confidentiality, um, but I can definitely check in with that. Great, thank you. Thank you. And what about summer programming? Will that continue as a part of the SUN program? Yeah, absolutely. So SUN programs also happen for program seasons a year. Um, so we will be doing summer programming as well and potentially working with Port Portland Parks and Rec as well. Awesome. Uh, let's see, May Laurie said, sorry, not sure if I understood. Is there a cost for the mentors? So we actually provide employment for our coach mentors. Um, so our coach mentors are fully paid um, throughout the program season. Um, the cost is with the agency that we work with and partner to provide the programming for youth. Um, and again, that is gonna be half of the wages of the coach mentor. Okay, so like the SUN program would pay half of that wage. Yeah, so it's the agency that partners with the SUN program. Got it, okay, so this- Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. <laughs> Great. Okay, great questions. Anyone else have any questions for Siana? How can we sign people up? Yeah, so I feel free to reach out to me and we can talk about what that looks like. We have enrollment forms um, that we kind of have students fill out with a few different kind of um, information questions. Um, and then that's kind of how we work with um, Sun Schools from there. But again, I encourage you to reach out and just kind of ask questions beyond that. Um, yeah, thank you. Absolutely. And Sienna put uh, their chat or their um, contact information in the chat. So please feel free to access that for follow up. Awesome. Any more questions? Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, Sienna, very much. Awesome program. Um, okay, great. All right, so next up is Ryan Brickley with the YWCA. Ryan is the leader of youth development. Hi, yeah, I'm leader of youth development for the YMCA. Um, 
I have never been on one of these calls, so thanks for having me. My supervisor <laughs> uh, wanted to be on, but she couldn't right now. I also had my invite deleted, so uh, I remember the meeting, but I kind of threw some stuff together uh, earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and try to share my screen. I don't usually use Zoom, so give me a second. And Shay, thanks for the correction. Yes, it is YMCA, not YWCA. Shay is with YWCA, so <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'm sorry, I panicked that I did not know one of my coworkers. Like, what? Like, how embarrassing. I so, appreciate okay. it. <laughs> my apologies, Ryan. No worries. Uh, okay, so I just wanted to give you a little overview. So the YMCA of Columbia Willamette is what I work for. And we have, um, right now we have five regions. So the region that I work for is the central region and that covers um, Portland Public and Park Road School Districts. So right now we have 13 before and after school programs running in Portland Public Schools. And we also have two child development centers that are open um, for the younger age kids. We have about 40 full-time staff, 25 part-time staff. Um, and then we own, so most of our programs are off site on other, like in, like I said, in Portland Public Schools, but we do own um, one building, which is our Southeast YMCA Child Development Center. Um, and I'll talk about a little bit what we're hoping to do with that in a minute. Um, and then we also have an advisory board and we're looking for, this is recently created. So we're looking for people that might be kind of interested in um, our mission and what we're doing that might want to be part of the advisory board. So I mentioned that, just throwing that out there. <laughs> right now we have six members. Um, this is, sorry, this is a little print, but I just wanted to give you an idea of kind of the structure of what we're doing. So we have, I am the leader of youth development. So um, those programs would be like child care programs, camp programs, um, sports programs, teen programming. And then we also have um, my coworker, Mackenzie, who's, she's a leader for healthy living. So she's um, focusing, with, um, all these programs are new, just trying to get started for healthy living. Um, so we're trying to get more family programming going, um, adult programs running in our area. So um, I'm going to give you a little overview of what we're doing in all both of those areas. So for youth development, this is more what I'm involved in. Um, we have, like I mentioned, we have our before and after school enrichment programs that are open. Um, we have 13 right now. We're going to have 11 next school year just because we staffing was a challenge and I don't want to stretch my staff too much. Um, so we have 13, or I mean, we have 13 right now. We'll have 11 before and after school enrichment programs in PPS. Um, we're also hoping to add more um, types of programming. So specific like sports, STEM, coding, um, those kinds of classes. We're thinking we're gonna try and start some of those at our um, Southeast Center this year and hopefully in Portland Public Schools next, or the following school year. Um, we do have child, early childhood development programs. So we have a program that runs um, at Providence St. Vincent Hospital, a lot for the staff there, but um, other families can join as well. And that is for uh, infant through preschool is served in that area. And then we have our Southeast Child Development Center that's right off Foster, kind of in the Lentz neighborhood. And that ha we have currently right now toddler through preschoolers or toddler through school age actually there. And that's where we're hoping to maybe add some of those enrichment classes. Um, we will be doing summer day camps. So we have um, funding through PPS to be able to add uh, 10 slots at all of our full summer day camp programs uh, for free for students that qualify under their RESJ um, qualifications. So like lower income families of color. Um, and so we have four of those five, sorry, five camp locations um, that are running full day programs. And then we also have enrichment camp running a little Lego coding um, program that'll be running for four weeks. We have sports programs that are running for four weeks. And then we also have um, a clay studio uh, art program that'll be running throughout the whole summer. Another program that I'm really excited about, this is kind of in the works, it's not up and running yet, is, um, a child care center at the Helping Hands Bybee Lakes Hope Center. I don't know if you guys know anything about this, but it's really, really cool. It's probably one of the coolest places I've ever been. <laughs> they took over the old Wapato Jail and they turned it into a houseless reentry program um, for families. And kind of it, the structure of it is like really unique, I think, in the way that they're approaching it. They're bringing all the services that would kind of be a barrier to people trying to get out of homelessness into, you know, jobs. Um, they have 
like dent their well they haven't set all these things up but they plan to have medical dental like any kind of counseling services addiction services they have a place where you can board your dogs while you go work or take classes in the center um and we're gonna they wanted to partner with us to be able to provide um child care for those families when they're staying in there it's a temporary housing but they can stay as long as they want um and then we have we're looking we haven't really started any we don't have any programs running in park Rose school district right now but we are kind of looking to make partnerships there so we know of any people we'd love to connect there kind of identify what kind of programs they might want um and then teen programming is a big thing that we're focusing on so we are starting a delegate delegation for youth and government um that should be happening this year um, right now we have kind of a sub program of that that's called change makers and it's for high school students in certain cities um, they were able to propose a project basically for um, a need in their community to like a delicate a need in their community um, two high school students were chosen by YMC at Columbia Lamont and they'll be going to DC and they're able to present that program at a big conference there and I believe three of them will be chosen and get funding for their projects. So ours is uh, the two teams. They created a program that's kind of like those, like lending libraries, like the little library. I don't know if you can know that. Um, so it's an exciting opportunity for them to be able to like come up with something and really feel like they're presenting it and being heard, and um, they might get funding to actually do their project, which is would be us. And then we also have. Um, funding through RESJ and PBS for um, a leaders in training program this summer. Uh, we're very basically just trying to foster leadership skills in um, teens, mostly junior high age um, kids to help in our programs. So obviously it would be free to them and they would be able to um, learn sort of the leadership skills that it would take to be a top care staff, to be able to be in charge of programming um, and the other skills like that. And then oh, my screen froze. Hold on. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> no, Technical no. difficulties. You're good. You're good. Okay. Nice. And then here's um, healthy living programs. I'm like I said, this isn't really my area so much. So I'm going to give you an overview. I might not have all the answers if you have questions about any of this, but I can get them. Um, so we just had, uh, there's a, uh, a guy named Anthony Rivera, he's um, starting a new program basically called Hip Hop for Love. And he had his first event at our Southeast YMCA Child Development Center on um, Saturday. And he's like really passionate. He is an ex addict. He's really passionate about um, like arts in the community and helping youth. And he wants to do more events like that. And it was a big community event that was food and music and live artists and things like that. So that was really cool and it was something that was happening on in our little area there which was great um we're hoping to maybe work with them more to provide some like teen art music classes adult classes anything like that so i just want to mention that because it just happened <laughs> and then we're hoping to turn um i've mentioned now our southeast building on foster we're hoping to turn that more right now it's just child care we're hoping to turn it more into kind of a community hub and have other kinds of services and things that people would need in that community or want in that community we do have a full clay studio there um, that we're trying to open up more. We've used it a lot for the kids, but we want to open it up more to adult programming too. Um, hoping maybe do things like esports. Ideally, we want to rebuild the whole building and the base around what the community would want in that area. So um, we're also looking at like mobile opportunities for programming in the YMCA, like a lot of people think of. Like, and swimming pools. We don't have that in our region right now, um, but we're looking at how we could use other like community, like other assets in the community to be able to provide programming there mobily. Um, and then we do have a partnership with Black Swimming Initiative, which is um, basically their whole thing is to be able to provide like accessibility to water safety and swimming instruction for, um, for everyone, but for people of color specifically. Um, we've pro we've uh, partnered with them in the past, and we're hoping to partner with them in um, Portland Parks and Recreation facilities to provide um, safe groundwater classes. So I think that was pretty much it. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Ryan. Does anyone have any questions for Ryan? I know there's a few in the chat. And I can go over those if there's any. Okay, I'll go ahead and start those. Um, are you hiring high school students for the camps or other programs? Sorry, I was trying to figure out how to. No problem. Um, yes, we are. Yeah, we are hiring. We hire high school students for any of our programs, but specifically for the summer, we would love to hire any. So if you have any high schoolers, send them my way. Awesome. Is there a link on your website to sign up for employment? There, how does that work? There, on our website, there is a um, employment. They could complete an application, or if they wanted to contact me directly, I could kind of help them navigate it. If, I know a lot of times it's people's first jobs and things like that. It's a little bit difficult, so um, that's totally fine too. Perfect. Awesome. And then um, I think alongside of Kia's question, just wondering, is there a place to go on your website to access all of these programs, which look awesome, um, by the way, uh, just so that we can share those with community or so some of or what's the best way? Some of them, um, so anytime that we have any upcoming like Black Swimming Initiative events, things like that, those will be on our website. All of our childcare programs um, are on the website. A few of the things like, for example, Helping Hands, um, it's not fully licensed and running yet. So that information's not really out there, but I could get a flyer of information about any of the programs specifically if they weren't something that was on the website. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I think specifically like any summer events happening or any sort of um, opportunities for families to sign up children to engage in activities one way or another would be awesome. Yeah, all that stuff is on the website, but I can share the link too. That would be great. And then uh, Kia wanted to know, and I'm assuming Kia, you're referring to employment, but is there, correct me if I'm wrong, is there an age requirement for employment? For, and for us, they would just need to be 15 years of age or older. Awesome. Great. Thank you. And if they're younger than that, then they could be part of our leaders and training program. So. Oh, cool. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. And then is there any cost for any of these programs from Tatiana? So that, depending on the program. Um, so when we're doing events like Black Swimming Initiative, those do not have a cost associated with them. Um, our child care programs do have a cost, but we do accept um, DHS payments, ERDC, a lot of families, and we also have scholarship access for families if they don't feel like they can afford the cost of it. Um, I think I mentioned we do have funding for summer through RESJ that um, with PBS that would cover the full cost for, for 50, I have 65 slots worth of funded, of, uh, sorry, of tuition funded through RESJ for the summer, so. Nice, awesome. All right, any other questions for Ryan? And Ryan, I would second your um, comments on Bybee Lakes. Such a beautiful facility. And I think Meg is on potentially still. Uh, there, she, there you are, Meg. <laughs> Wave again, there we go. Um, we had the opportunity to go through a tour at Bybee Lakes and just a beautiful, well done facility. Super excited to see it put into um, motion. And now if we can just get transportation there uh, for some of the <laughs> some of the needs, that would be great. Um, but the, the child care center is just beautiful. It is really well done. So kudos to Meg and her team um, and uh, well done. So yes, and I'm excited to see Ryan that, that uh, YMCA will be there. That's awesome. Cool. Okay. Any other questions for Ryan before we move along to our next presenter? Okay. Looks like uh, Mailer. Okay, great. Awesome, Meg. So Meg put a Meg's email in the chat if you would like a tour of Bybee Lakes. I highly encourage it. It's beautiful. Um, and well done. And May Lori wanted to know, she said, I support very poor parents from marginalized communities in the St. John's and downtown Portland area. Do you have any locations in these areas, Ryan? So we, we do have um, before and after school programs. Um, I think the closest to that would be Beach. We do have a summer um, camp that's running at Beach um, that's up in North Portland. 
and that would that has also where we're doing our counselors and training program. So I have 25 slots um, for free childcare for the summer at the beach. Oh, awesome. And maybe Ryan, would you mind putting your information in the chat? That would be awesome. And then May Laura, you can connect with Ryan directly for the for that location. Great. Awesome. Any other questions? Okay. Cool. Thank you so much, Ryan. Awesome programming. I love seeing these um, fantastic summer programs on the, on the cusp. We're so close to summer and as a previous teacher, I always worried about my students and what they were going to do during the summer. So it's neat to see these awesome programs coming up and being able to do it in person feels really good. So mask or no mask, it just feels good. So, all right. So last but not least, we have David with Comcast Internet Essentials. And uh, they have our, our uh, most recent sponsor of the CSN and they have been at our most recent fair. So we appreciate their par partnership very much and their programming. So David, I will let you take it away. Thank you so much for being here. Awesome, yeah, thank you for having me. So I'm David Harden, I'm with Comcast, the Oregon and Southwest Washington, and I'm a manager on our external affairs team. So today I just wanna talk about internet essentials and a couple of our other digital equity programs and kind of where they're at now and where they're going. Um, and this internet essentials is, uh, high speed, low cost internet that we make available to eligible households all across our footprint. And so we'll talk about some of those eligibility requirements as well. Um, I'm actually just going to initiate a screen share here. And before I do that, just the audio check. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Awesome. Almost got the right screen up, I think. That should work. Oh, great. Awesome. Thanks. Okay, cool. So, um, so essentially, again, Internet Essentials is a digital equity program for low income households. And we'll talk about some of those eligibility requirements as we move through the presentation here. Um, but really, it's about digital equity and uh, we kind of have three different pillars that we've stood up under our project up, which is stands for unlimited possibilities that we run all across in the footprints that Comcast operates in and Oregon and Southwest Washington is part of our West division. So it's a very big region for us. We have over 2,600 employees that both live, work and play here in our backyard. Um, but Internet Essentials is really designed to, uh, it's a three pronged approach. So one's about connectivity, giving people access to the internet. Again, high speed and low cost. Two, it's about providing digital skills training. And then three, it's about subsidizing devices, making sure that folks that participate in the Internet Essentials program have access to high quality, low cost devices uh, with a discount. And we'll talk about what that looks like. Another leg of this program is our Internet Essentials Partnership Program. And instead of having an individual account under a family household, we partner with school districts and other charitable organizations that decide to fund a certain uh, number of uh, folks for their internet connectivity. And this program is less than $10 a month. It's $9.95. But uh, when it's sponsored by an organization, it does uh, eliminate some of the process or steps that somebody would have to go through to sign up for. So it makes it a little bit easier. We'll talk about that as well. And then lastly, our lift zones. Um, we committed to standing up a thousand um, of what we call lift zones. And so those are nonprofit partners that are already in existing community organizations, neighborhoods where broadband adoption rates are somewhat lower than average. And so these are places where uh, students, people looking for employment, access to healthcare services, um, trying to stay connected to friends or family, whatever it is, they can go to these locations, they can access high speed internet at no additional cost. David, we don't see a screen. Sorry, Rebecca, what you? You were saying what I was going to say, Annie. Oh, okay. okay <laughs> great. Here, give me we one second. Here. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. 
I've got a. You're doing a great job. I thought I was doing doing awesome here. So let's. You see. are. You are. <laughs> now you'll probably see a little bit of a. Um, you're going to see yourself, I believe, for just a split second, and then you'll see my slides with any luck. So let's see what we got going on here. I think it's getting close. We there we go. Yep. Perfect. Slides? Yes. Oh success. my gosh! Success. <laughs> Okay, so these are the three pillars that I was just talking about, and this deck is shareable, so you'll have access to this. I'll um, put a link so that you can download it if you want to take a look at it, and we'll stay on for questions. Uh, but essentially, for us to, to our digital equity initiatives, the Internet Essentials, the partnership program, which we'll talk about how people can, or organizations can become partners, and then lift zones. And a lot of the lift zones in our backyard, uh, again, are at uh, some of our existing community partners and some of their existing facilities. Uh, but again, those are places where Students can go, families can go, they can access uh, internet without having an account in their name and they can uh, stay connected to services that are accepted. So this is a little bit more detail about the Internet Essentials Partnership Program. And again, we work with uh, school districts locally, Hillsborough School District is one of our partners, Portland uh, Public Schools is one of our partners. And essentially, this allows them to fund the internet access for uh, some of their constituents or their community members. And so they pick which level they want to be at, either the uh, standard $9.95, which gives customers uh, 50 megabits per second download and 10 megabits per second upload, or they do the Internet Essentials Plus, which is a new tier that came out after the Affordable Connectivity Program, which is twice as fast. Um, but essentially, they pay you know, for like 10 or 15 subscriptions and then they can just hand out a code to a family that lives within their district. The family just uses that code. They don't have to go through the application process or anything, and then they can connect to uh, high-speed internet. And when we look at lift zones, um, again, we've stood up a thousand of them locally in our market. We have 20, we have about three more that are coming online this year. They're spread out all across our footprint. Uh, most recently, I was doing tours of some of the boys and girls clubs where we have active lift zones and just kind of checking in on them and seeing how they're going. Uh, but originally, we committed to doing a thousand uh, at the onset of the pandemic. Those have already been stood up and we're continuing to add more when we find the right partners in the right locations where um, we find that the broadband connectivity community is underserved. And so Internet Essentials, again, is not just the low cost, high speed Internet, but it's also the low cost computers. Uh, if you're enrolled in Internet Essentials, you can purchase a brand new Internet ready laptop. We partner with Dell. We partner with Samsung from time to time for Chromebooks, and they get those for one hundred and forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. It's usually about a three hundred and eighty dollar computer based on our vendor. Sometimes it's uh, a little bit less, but uh, high value and it's definitely um, uh, subsidized by the program. So again, a brand new device, you don't have to worry about anybody that's had it previously, what's on it, um, when we connect those customers to those devices. And there's oftentimes uh, where we are able to give those devices away uh, throughout the year as well. So uh, if there's a compelling story or somebody's in dire need, or if we're launching a new lift zone, or if we just want to connect with a new organization, uh, then sometimes we can put low cost computers as part of that program. Uh, but the third prong is the digital skills training. And that is extremely important because a lot of times people will have um, access to internet, but they don't necessarily know what to do with it. And so we serve a wide variety of folks with this particular program. They have all different levels of comfort uh, with computer training. So what we want to do is make sure that, you know, again, if you're staying connected to family, if you're staying connected to health, if you're staying connected to employment, um, whatever the reason is for you to use or access the internet, we want to make sure that folks feel um, confident when they're doing so. And so we offer uh, several trainings at no additional charge to allow people to uh, engage with the internet on their own terms. So who's eligible for this program? So there's uh, the, the eligibility for Internet Essentials has grown over the years. Um, so that's something that we're really excited about. Uh, but if you're eligible for any uh, public assistance programs, national school lunch, public housing assistance through HUD, Medicaid, SNAP, et cetera, um, there's also some uh, military and some retirement eligibility that's relatively new. Um, but they have to live in our footprint. They have to be somewhere where they can actually attain Comcast services. Uh, they have to have not had a standard Comcast internet account within the last 90 days. And then they have to have no outstanding debt to Comcast that is less than a year old. 
Um, through the pandemic, this eligibility has changed and it's been a little bit more fluid based on kind of what we're hearing from the communities. Uh, but right now, the biggest exception to that is with the Affordable Connectivity Program, which is a government subsidized program uh, that pays for a portion of internet. And with some of our programs, it would pay for the entirety of the internet. So we'll take a look at that. But if a customer qualifies for the Affordable Connectivity Program nice. and they enroll within uh, uh, within 90 days, then we waive those requirements. So if they do both for ACP and uh, Internet Essentials, we can waive that 90 day requirement. And we can also waive that outstanding debt eligibility. That goes through uh, June 30th at this time. It's been extended uh, before. So we'll uh, provide an update to this team once we know if it's going to be extended again. Because uh, we do know the Affordable Connectivity Program is going to be around for quite some time. And so the ACP is um, again started at the beginning of the year, and it is up to a $30 a month credit towards internet services for customers that are eligible for ACP that have more than just internet from us. The $30 would cover the cost of their internet and the um, and uh, any internet related equipment that might be on their account. Uh, but you can also use it towards mobile internet services as well. Uh, but again, we offer $10. Uh, for internet essentials, that $30 would cover it, and then they would still have $20 remaining that they could apply to a mobile internet service. So they could have connectivity at home and on the go. And we do offer uh, wireless service as well, so mobile uh, phone service. But that's a, up to a $30 bill credit. So uh, the links will be provided with the deck. Uh, customers can apply for internet essentials and ACP. Uh, there is a national verifier form for the affordable connectivity program so you would start there that will give them an access code within 48 hours where they can apply that to their internet essentials account two ways to apply for internet essentials we'll take a quick look at what that looks like um, either online or via phone number and the internet essentials uh, stuff is available in 35 different languages so we're trying to make sure that that's not a barrier for uh, folks to access connectivity as well so there's an online application, which has really been streamlined for uh, mobile devices now. A lot of times when we're out and about in the community, folks want to get started right then and there. And so this is one of the quickest, most easiest ways to do it. You notice the language uh, buttons right in the upper right hand corner on the screen. So it's very easy for somebody to select and engage with the language they're comfortable with. Uh, we also have a call center that handles these. But something that we're really excited about is uh, just recently we've been able to uh, do internet essential signups in all of our retail locations, which uh, before it was either funneled online or through the call center. So now if people want to get that in-person support, they can definitely do so, and they can do that in any of our uh, retail locations as well. Trying to make bill payment easy for customers. Um, we do have the ability to accept cash or money order through Western Union. Uh, they can pay by phone, they can mail checks, they can pay in store. Um, so we're trying to make sure that that's not a barrier for folks to have access to the internet anymore as well. And then this is just a real high level overview of what our learning center looks like. It's online, it's ungated, you can access it now. You don't have to be a part of the Internet Essentials Program to see some of these um seminars and some of these tutorials and some of these learnings that we have again these are available in different languages but we really want to make sure people have a comfortable baseline before um, they get one of those subsidized laptops or you know if they're going to start going into a lift zone or starting to use more internet uh, at their house uh, we want to make sure that they feel supported in that journey and so this is stuff that's available and this is the type of material that we present in person with some of our community partners that we work with as well So how do we tell people about it? Uh, we have a grassroots approach. Uh, so you'll see us out and about in community. You'll see us sponsoring certain things. Um, but we also have traditional marketing behind this program as well. Uh, over 10 million households have connected to Internet Essentials since this was launched. It just celebrated its 10 year anniversary not that long ago. So this is year 11. Uh, but we continue to grow this movement and to, again, make sure that uh, for folks that are eligible, it's very easy for them to sign up and that we can get them the connectivity that they're looking for. And part of that grassroots approach is we have a partner uh, resource that's available. It's called a partner portal. But essentially, anybody can go on to this. They can register their organization or as an individual. And this will give you access to free printed resources 
I'll also be able to download files so that if you want to tell folks that are uh, part of your organization about how they can might potentially be able to access internet, uh, low cost, high speed internet, um, we make all this available uh, to folks through our partner portals. And you can reach out to us and we can show you how it works or we can get the materials for you. Um, but if you think that there's an opportunity to engage with your uh, the communities you serve to talk about uh, this internet program, then definitely we want to partner with you. And I've put my information in the chat and also um, with the attendance. So. so really, how does the program work for our partners? Uh, you can receive materials to promote the program. Again, we've made it easy for customers to sign up, easy for them to, uh, to get information and easy for them to get support, easy for them to pay their bill. Uh, you have to just send a single email. It'll come with a template. If you want to host your own sign-up event, we'll offer support for that as well. Um, but really what we want is for folks to be a part of the partnership program so that you don't have to wait for somebody to deliver materials for you. If there's a need for flyers, if there's a need for educational resources, you can register with this pro portal and you'll have access to all of it in real time. Uh, but you can also lean on our local team if you need any of this information or if you want additional information and we'll be more than happy to provide that for you. Um, and then once you sign up as a partner in the portal, you'll have access to the free digital literacy training. So it's almost like a train the trainer. You know, what do I do next? Now that some of these folks in my organization are on internet essentials, or maybe it's just folks that want to be more comfortable um, operating in a digital environment, whatever that need is, you'll have access to a train the trainer for some of those seminars so you can start to execute them on your own. Or again, you can reach out and partner with us and we'll find a way to make that happen. This is just some of the uh, numbers um, before we just open it up for questions. Uh, again, over 10 million uh, households connected to this program since it launched, uh, which is something that we're really proud of, uh, really providing that connectivity. Since the advent of this program, there have been enhancements. We've increased the eligibility. We've increased the speeds that these customers connect at. Um, but we haven't increased the price. It stayed at $9.95, which is something that we're extremely proud of. Uh, over $700 million have been invested in this program over the past 10 years. Again, that looks like the uh, subsidized devices, the digital skills training, the reduced cost for the internet. And then we've given away or we provided subsidized computers, 150,000 of them um, under this program. So when you think about connectivity, a lot of times when we give away one of these devices, uh, it's the first time that the house has had a uh, laptop or a desktop computer, which is uh, something that is uh, a big moment for sure. So where are we headed? Uh, well, we've committed over the next 10 years to double down our investment in digital equity, and we're gonna spend over a billion dollars on that. Um, we can talk about some of the other programs that we have, uh, but really this is gonna be in the form of lift zone investment, community impact, grants that we're giving to community partners, and uh, again, continuing with the Internet Essentials program. Uh, in regards to homework hours, what have we been able to accomplish with the lift zones? Uh, 25 million hours of uh, schoolwork was take, done in these lift zones. And so that is something that during the pandemic uh, was extremely important for a lot of these uh, students. But we're looking to grow this. You know, these are active spaces after school as well. And so there's a lot of connectivity there. Uh, we're hoping to have over 650 million hours of internet access, homework, education, uh, healthcare connectivity uh, by 2031. So very ambitious goals, but we know that with strong community partnerships, we can get there. And then these are just a couple of numbers to kind of close on um, based on, you know, surveys that we've done with uh, existing Internet Essentials customers. Uh, positive impact on child's grades is one of the, my favorites, you know, eliminating those barriers. We hear stories of students that were trying to sit in like a McDonald's parking lot and access the free Wi-Fi for two hours to do homework. And that's, that's not a conducive learning environment. Being able to go into a lift zone or being able to uh, have internet essentials at the household is really you know, eliminating one of those barriers and allowing people to connect and to thrive. 76% uh, of those households say someone uh, in their household found a job using the internet once they were enrolled in this program. So. Um, Really, it's again, low cost, high speed internet, but it has the power to uh, change someone's living circumstances. Um, so uh, we're, again, we're really proud of this program.
And that's where I'd like to close. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and uh, just I can open it up for some questions, I believe. Thank you so much, David. That's such a critical work that you're doing, the access. I know many of us can, um, you know, when you experience an outage for a moment, it's a super big frustration. Yeah. And to not have access to start is a huge barrier. So providing that, uh, thank you so much for the work that you do. It's super important. Um, does anyone have questions for David? A lot of information. Of course, we'll share the slide deck. Fern, did you go ahead? Thank you. Um, David, what is, how do we contact you or are you the right person that we contact for more information and answering a bunch of questions? Yeah, um, definitely. You can reach out to me specifically. Um, let me just make sure my info is dropped in the chat. I know it's on the sign up sheet, but I'll uh, put my email and my uh, uh, mobile phone in here and you can reach out. Uh, we have a team that we work with here locally, but yeah, you can definitely reach out to me and I'll make sure either myself or the right person gets back to you for sure. Wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I will, Fern, I'll share the attendance information after the meeting. So you, uh, you'll have everyone's emails. So, um, and if you don't mind, um, if everyone hasn't put their attendance in, please feel free to do that. I just posted the link. Um, David, it looks like there's a couple more questions. Do you know of specific on-site training opportunities for folks with mo mobility barriers? So in-person versus digital, is that what you're saying, Troy? Yes. Okay. Great. So um, I'm relatively. Uh, make sure we got. Yeah. Uh, so I'm relatively new in role, but I've been with Comcast for ten years. Um, and so um, one of my first um, thing orders of business was to go into all of our local lift zones. The vast majority of those are housed at. Um, boys and girls clubs within the community and we have a couple military partnerships and a couple of other ones where we got locations um, but my job is really to activate those zones and so that's to stand up in person digital literacy skills training and working with the actual lift zones for that staffing and for that curriculum uh, so I don't have anything that's scheduled right now but we will have stuff um, soon that we'll be able to invite community partners to uh, there's also uh, some online and some other stuff that people can do in regards to mobility, but all of those clubs are, you know, designed to have full access. It's just a matter of there's children hours and then sometimes there's open hours as well. And it looks like Rebecca Brown, who's also with our uh, team, our community impact team, she had her hand up, I believe. Rebecca, I think you captured it, David. I was just going to add, and Troy, if you're specifically, you're talking about training, like digital skills training, not training for more information around IE and how to sign up, right? But the digital skills. Right, digital skills for, okay. for people with internet essentials, correct. Okay, and while we don't have anything necessarily that we host on, um, kind of in person ourselves, we look at supporting, you know, some different community partners, let's say Free Geek, for example, or the Arc Lane County down in Eugene, um, who are already hosting and doing those digital skills trainings for the community. And we sort of help sponsor and support that work. And then our Internet Essentials families or households are able to attend those and, and that kind of paused during the pandemic. But I think as we you know start to open up and continue to do more in person again, that's that's kind of we, how we help support what's going on in the community, if that makes sense. So it's not us hosting it as Comcast, but supporting partners that are doing that work. Okay. And Rebecca, it sounds like if an, a nonprofit wanted to be partner, um, they would hear about those trainings more quickly or be able to potentially host something like that at their site. Is that correct? Is that what I'm understanding? Potentially, yes. Yeah. So it's a it's a partnership we would talk about, you know, enter into and see what we can and can't support. And then those trainings would live like on the Internet Essentials website. So if somebody was connected in an IE household and wanted to go online and say, what's happening in my area to get, you know, 
trained in, they could go there and see what's available, what times where, if they have to call ahead and sign up or not. Um, I will say there's been a pause in that though over the past two years. And I, I, I don't think it's really ramped up again at this time, mm-hmm. um, slowly but surely, but that's how it used to be um, a more robust opportunity. And that's where you can go. So I think once we start to reopen and do more in person again, that could be a source to go to. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Very much. Any other questions for David or Rebecca? I know there's been a few requests to share the slide deck. I think David, you had said that that would be okay. Is that correct? Awesome. Great. Perfect. And then David, if they want to become like the nonprofit wants to become a partner, do they just connect with you or is the place that they go to do that? Yeah, so the link will be in the deck. Um, you, they'll be able to register their organization either as an individual or as an organization to be a partner through the online site and they'll ship them the initial materials. And then um, once they register there, they'll have access to all the trainings and all of the information. And then again, we can work with them locally to make sure that those supplies are replenished or they'll be able to do fulfillment on their own based on the website and there's no charge again for shipping or printed materials for community partners um, so we make it really easy for them fantastic that's awesome thank you mm-hmm. that's great okay so it looks like oh rebecca answered um i think there was a question about laptops and how do we find out more about that and rebecca said you can visit the website and there's a tab about the low cost computers. You do have to be an internet essentials customer in order to purchase a subsidized laptop. Great, awesome. Okay, super important information. Thank you so much for sharing. Any other questions? Keep coming in, that's great. Okay. Fantastic, wonderful. Well, thank you to all of you, Sienna and Ryan and David and Rebecca for sharing today. Your information is very valuable and necessary in the work that all of us do. So um, thank you again for your time and your expertise. We appreciate it. So I am going to go ahead and stop recording. Let's see, where am I? I feel like I'm looking at, there we go. (laughs) 